Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I wanted to show you another design for a rope mat. This time, we're going to take a look at an oval shaped rope mat. This style is very appropriate both for doormats as well as hot pads for the table. Now, this mat is not the easiest out there to tie, but it is also very practical. As such, I highly recommend trying it. Now, I've had quite a bit of difficulty demonstrating this mat, and for me, it's a lot harder to make a video about it then actually tie it. So I hope you will appreciate the effort and with that said, let's get started. The main supply for this project is going to be rope. I'm going to be using some hemp rope, but you can choose to use cotton, you can choose synthetic ropes, anything that you would like. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using a quarter inch rope and for a three pass version of this mat, which is the regular kind, you're going to need about 32 feet of rope. So, 32 feet of a quarter inch hemp rope is what I am going to be using. After cutting a rope, it is time to secure the ends. You can tape them up using some duct tape, or you can choose to use a whipping, which is a very nice and decorative way of finishing an end of your rope. To do a whipping, I'm going to demonstrate the common whipping. We take a piece of thread or cord and we fold one end into a bite. So like this, we have a small folded piece at the end of our thread and we place this bite over the end of our rope, like this. And with the long end of my thread, I'm going to travel around the end of my rope and simply cover it in a series of turns. Now I'm going to continue this until I have only a little bit of my thread remaining. So let's say that this is a sufficient length for our common whipping. I'm now going to take my long end and I'm going to pass it under and through this loop on the left side. So under and through, like this. Then Pull this long end under these wraps using this right end. So I keep on pulling until this long end is at about the center of my turns. So in the middle of our whipping. So when it is at the middle, I begin pulling on both of the ends and this is going to make your common whipping very secure. Now we simply trim the ends and our common whipping is complete. After securing both ends of my rope, I'm going to proceed by tying the mat. The first thing that I'm going to do is find the middle point in my rope. For this purpose, I'm going to fold it in half. So let's say that this is the middle point in my rope. I'm going to continue by making a loop. For the loop, I'm going to place the left end over the right end. Like this. So this is the first bite in my mat. I'm going to pin it down just to help me hold it in place. 
When you're tying the actual mat, you don't need to use pins. This, the use of pins just helps me hold the mat in place for you to be better able to see what I'm doing. We're going to continue by taking the right end and we're going to make a bite on the bottom right. So I have placed my right end over the left end. This creates a bite. Then I'm going to take the left end and I'm going to travel under the bite on the right, creating another bite, this time on the left side. So like this. Then I'm going to take the top left end, so the left end here, and I'm going to travel under the loop and under the other end as well. So like this, under the loop and under the other end. Then I'm going to take the other end, so this top right one, and I'm going to weave through the loop, going over, under, over, and over this part of the rope as well. Like this. So I went over, under, over, then over here. I'm now going to place this left end over the bite again. Like this. Then I'm going to take the right end and I'm going to travel under the bite here on the right. So under and under the left end as well. Like this. Now I'm going to take the left end of the two and I'm going to travel through these cords. So I'm going to start under, then go over, then over this one as well and over again, then under and over. So essentially, I went under one, over three, under one, over one. Then, with the other end here on the bottom right, I'm going to go through these parts of the row. I'm going to start over, then under, and under again, then over, under, over, under. Like this. I'm now going to take this top left end 
I'm going to travel over, under, over, under, under, and finally over to the bottom right. Then, with this top right end, I'm going to travel under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Like this. And with this, the mat is tied. What I'm going to do now is at the bottom, I'm going to take one of the ends. In my case, I'm going to use this bottom right end and I'm going to place it next to the bottom left end. I'm going to enter the knot under one, like this, and this is going to form the bite at the bottom. Now, at this point, what you do is you rearrange the knot so that it has a nice oval shape. Now for this, I'm going to have to remove the pins. So, after removing the pins, I'm going to shape up the knot into a nice oval shape. Now, it doesn't look like much yet, but after doubling and tripling it up, it's going to get an even nicer shape. The look of the knot is one bite at the very top, then two, then three at the sides, then another two at the bottom, then a final one at the bottom as well. Once you have that basic setup completed, we're going to continue by doubling and tripling the knot. To double or triple the knot, you take one of the ends and you follow the other end until you run out of rope. So something like this. When you run out of rope in one of the ends, you take the other one and you do exactly the same thing. You follow the other end. So something like this. So continue doubling and then tripling the knot until you run out of the ends. At that point, we're going to finish the mat. After tripling the mat, as well as adjusting it a little bit, it already looks great. Now the last thing that we need to do is secure both ends of our rope in order to prevent the mat from coming undone. To do this, we're going to get both ends of my rope at the same location. And at this point we have three ways of finishing the mat. We can use a splicing technique, basically splicing both ends into our mat. We can stitch both ends together, or we can do a lashing. Once you are happy with the look of your mat and you have both ends of your rope at the same location, we can begin finishing the mat. Usually what I do is I reapply my whippings onto each of the ends, then I trim them. Now you can skip applying the whippings and go straight for the finishing technique such as stitching, lashing or splicing. But I like to do my whippings since it is a nice little detail.
the stitch, we're going to take our needle and we're going to start at the second strand from the top. So we're going to go through the two strands and come out at the top. Then we're going to turn back down and go through all four of our strands. Then back up through all four of the strands again. Then down again through four of the strands. And up again through four of the strands. Now at this point what you can do is simply lock off your thread by stitching it in through the first strand a few times. So you make a small loop, then you travel through it. This is just so that the stitching won't come loose. And you can do this several times until you feel that your stitching is secure. Now once you're done, simply go through all of the strands towards the bottom side. Like this, then snip the thread. And with this, your mat is stitched together and ready to be used. So, guys, with the mat done, I would like to thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. Thank you and see you next time.